This is Hollywood, and there's not a place in the world that's like it. Hollywood Joe and I'm back in Hollywood. As a matter of fact, I am back at the northern entrance of Hollywood. They built this sign here, not only this sign, but they built this whole park and opened it up about two years ago. Now, it took Hollywood two and a half years to build this park. Go, all right, now they put up the sign. The one tree in the back there, I believe God made. They put in a little cement. About 13 rose bushes. And that's about it. Two and a half years. Thank goodness the movie industry doesn't move that slow. Anyway, we are on the corner of Franklin and Wilcox. Now you may or may not know this, but Hollywood came that close to be called Wilcox. There was a gentleman by the name of Harvey Wilcox and his lovely wife, Dee. Now, they had some pretty deep pockets. They were loaded, they had a lot of money, and they were from the Midwest. It's cold in the Midwest, especially around January and February. So they wanted to come out, be in the warm weather around the fruit trees, came out here. They loved it. They invited all their friends out. They brought an incredible parcel of land. The one thing that the Wilcox did not like was boozers. They didn't like drinkers. And if you drank, there was no place for you in Hollywood. Get out of town. Now, there was already a lot of people living here, and there was a lot of beer joints here. So they had to shut down these beer joints and they moved someplace else. Now, here's an interesting little fact. Because you couldn't have booze here, you had all these saloons that were empty. And back in the day, there were a lot of saloons because, hey, there were no motion pictures, there were no TVs, there were no video games, no internet, telephone, etc., etc. So people drank a lot. Now, with these bars empty, the movie people said, uh-huh, I'll make them studios and editing bays. So the movie people moved into Hollywood and set up their movie studios in what used to be bars and taverns. That's a true story. Oh, oh, how it got its name Hollywood? You see, it was that close to being called Wilcox. It seems that Harvey's wife, Dee, went back to the Midwest, in the summer, of course, and came across this beautiful town, Dayton, Ohio. And they had these most marvelous trees there, and they were called Hollywoods. And she loved them. And she came back, and she was telling Harvey about it, and Harvey loved it, and he said, hey, let's name our town Hollywood. Well, there was another town over here called Woodland, and they didn't want to be left out. So they named this place Holly Woodland. Now, through the years, the land got cut off, and it just became Hollywood. Now, that's a true story. All right. Let's go see a little bit more of this most marvelous Holly Woodland. The, uh, the police are always around in Hollywood. Anytime you're shooting on the streets, or you're shooting on the sidewalk, you gotta pay off somebody. Otherwise, they'll call the police and say, there's a movie company out here and I don't think they have a permit, you know? It's really interesting, Hollywood is complaining about all the movie companies that are moving out of this state. And yet, they make it so incredibly difficult to shoot here. You're hassled by the police, you're hassled by the business owners, you're hassled by any passerbys that, that want money so they don't get into your shot. This is probably one of the most difficult places in the world to shoot. I, I am amazed 
that movie companies still shoot here. Oh, well, say la vie. Okay, turn the camera on. Oh, the camera was on. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Let's go over and talk about Hollywood. Here we are, and we're at Hollywood and Vine. We're right across from the Kodak Center, and uh, one day before too long, we're going to tour the Kodak Center and do a whole story, do a whole show on the Kodak Center. But here, now, this great building is called the Bain Building, and it was built back in 1920. Now, the unique thing about Mr. Bain is that 1927, he got all the other merchants here on Hollywood Boulevard to chip in and buy reindeer, real live reindeer with a sled to ride up and down Hollywood Boulevard. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the very start of the Hollywood Christmas Parade. And we owe it all to this gentleman, Mr. Bain, who also, in his spare time when he wasn't marching in parades, had time to build this building. But it's marvelous, marvelous building. You know, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting thing about gargoyles. Uh, my daughter, Amanda, uh, my youngest daughter, and, and, and an actress too, and a marvelous one, uh, she collects gargoyles. And I said, oh man, these things are kind of hideous. Why do you collect them? And she said, gargoyles are actually angels. They're angels. And they're made to look hideous and ugly to keep evil things out. So they're made to not look ugly, but they're made to look scary, you know, to keep the, the, the bad element out. So that's the story about uh, gargoyles, and that's why they look the way they do. Hey, you watch Hollywood Joe, you learn something. Let's move on. Charles, can you talk to us a second, please? Gee, it's, uh, it's such an honor to meet your presence. Uh, uh, are you having a good day today, Charlie? And can I shake your hand? Now, you know, contrary to popular belief, Charlie, we've seen all your great silent films, and a lot of people who haven't seen The Great Dictator or whatever didn't know that you could actually talk. But not only can you talk, but you're a, 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 great, uh, uh, <laughs> a, di you're a great dialogue person. And uh, what are you doing out here on the boulevards of Hollywood? Just making everybody smile. And you're doing a doggone good, fine job of it, Charlie. Yeah. People laugh. Yeah. Now, Charlie, you're out here of your own accord, just uh, uh, on the boulevard, or somebody telling you to get out here, a company or something? Well, I created this whole scenario before before the Kodak Theater wasn't even wasn't even here, and I'm the, I'm the original out here. Yeah. And I have a letter. Here's a letter. Okay. Signed by the mayor, uh, Richard Verdon, before he left office. Okay. And I'm the ambassador. Oh, I'll get that for you. Hold that. Oh, 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 that's probably worth $16 billion. Thank you. Charlie plays the lottery. <laughs> and he has a mayor. He has a letter for the mayor. To him and make concern. Our city is undergoing a, a wonderful renewal. Uh, he said, you got to love this human being. I enjoyed meeting her. I tell you, <laughs> impersonator extraordinaire. And uh, anyway, it's signed by the mayor, uh, Richard Rorden, and uh, you are you are official. I'm the only artist on the boulevard that has this letter. Wow. Well, congratulations to you, sir. Seriously. Uh, all right. So, Charlie, out of all the <laughs> out of all the marvelous movies that you made, uh, what would you say that is your favorite? City lights. City lights. City lights. Oh my goodness! And I. I I forget, and, and, and do you remember who you co-starred with in that? Uh, you've made so many movies. I, I, I totally understand, yeah. But, Charlie, thank you so very much. And, and, and uh, the great Dick, let me add, go ahead. Of the parlor, my wife, Tuna uh -huh. O'Neill. Tuna O'Neill. Yeah. Oh, marvelous. All right. Uh, is, is it true? Now, they say that when you made The Great Dictator, that Adolf Hitler was one of his his most favorite films. Is that true or false? It's <laughs> probably true at the time. Probably true because you're the greatest filmmaker that ever lived. God bless you. Thank you for the interview, Charlie. Thank you. Bye-bye.
the shot. This is all done live with three cameras, like a theater piece. And when you watch it while they're filming it, it's like a theater piece. It's continuous action, and then it's cut together with the three cameras to what you get. And cut right as you shoot it. As yes, right, yeah. Every child needs a place. A place to call home. To call home. Every child needs a place. Where they can grow up healthy. And learn. And be safe. Safe. A place where they can play. And dream. And plan for their future. In the Habitat House, my parents helped build. In the Habitat House, my daddy helped build. My parents. My mommy. My mommy and daddy. I study. I grow. I learn. I live. A house. A house. A house. A chance. A future. A house. A chance. A future. Are all in your hands. Your support can help put a decent roof over the heads of a family like mine. Like mine. Like mine. To learn how you can help, visit Habitat.org. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within, over enemies of fear, enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. Promises to one's community. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of battles won. And this is uh, our, in fact, our newest set. We only got this set uh, a couple of years ago oh, okay. when X Files uh, was canceled. I think summer of '02. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so this is Mulder's office, his original office from the X Files, with all the original set dressing, including the ceiling panels, which I had to pull from the garbage at Fox. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so we could do wow. the pencil trick, right? Yeah. Stick the pencils up. Wow! Wow! And did it, did it come with the pencils, Chris, or is this? No, true? no, I, I went out and bought the pencils, but don't tell anyone. No, no. Uh, <laughs> and well. I didn't try to, I actually went up there and stuck them in. Okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. So, Gosh. another funny thing is that when I looked at the awards, I don't know if they screwed it up or, or what, but on, on one of the awards, his, they got it, his name wrong, or his, his name was originally Agent Mulden and not Mulder. Agent Mulden, M-U-L-D-E-N. So, so somehow yeah. somebody messed up on something. It, it is intramural basketball? Yeah, FBI, FBI intramural <laughs> basketball. <laughs> he's a, he's a big star, right? That's classic. <laughs> That's classic. Oh, my. Uh, and the other thing. And this I, is his office. This is his office. Yeah. See, what I didn't get is, you know, if you watch the show, his office is unbelievably cluttered. There's papers everywhere. Uh -huh. and, and they didn't give us all that. They threw that away. So I've been filling it up, you know, Every time I've got a stack of scrap paper, uh, I just throw uh, it in here. <laughs> Chris, you have more than a full-time job. Just, just staying even on this, uh, even on this place, keeping up with the work. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, you know, we do. Apart from the permanent exhibits, which we've been looking at, we do eight to ten temporary exhibits a year. Oh. So okay. you know, out in the galleries, uh, I, right now I've got an uh, exhibit of art photography and an exhibit of punk. Uh -huh. Art yeah. from from the uh, from the uh, late seventies and early eighties. Yes. And my next exhibit is going to be a big exhibit called Hollywood in Las Vegas about the interconnection between Las Vegas and Hollywood. Uh -huh. And that's going to be up all summer long until September. Wow! Wow! So you're busy. I mean, you're a very busy yes. man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell my boss that. <laughs> uh, well, he'll know it uh, when he sees this. Now. Now we're moving to the Cheers Bar. Ah, uh, all right. Which this is, is still, this even is though this favorite. show has been yeah. off the air mm -hmm. for more than ten years, uh, as a live show, is still our most popular set. 
I watch very little television, but I've watched every Cheers episode. I love Cheers. It's a, it's a, oh well, my here it goodness. is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh my goodness. And, and of course, what I tell people yeah. about this show is, of course, this was a live show. So there's nothing on this wall over here because that's where the audience sits. Uh -huh. The other two sets are, are one camera shows. In other words, you know, they're right. shot like film. You set up the camera, you do a shot. This mm -hmm. is all done live with three cameras, like a theater piece. And when you watched it while they're filming it, it's like a theater piece. It's mm -hmm. continuous action and then it's cut together with the three cameras to what you get. And cut right as you shoot it. As yes, you shoot it, yes. yeah. And, yes. they, and of course, you can only do that as a, with a sitcom when it's, the whole show takes place on one set, whether yeah. it's you know, the Shears bar or the Seinfeld you know, yeah. living room or the friend's apartment yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Now, it, now, where the two beers are sitting there, now, is, yeah. that, uh, is that who I think sits there? That is where Norm sits, That's right there. Norm sits. Absolutely, <laughs> Norm sits right there, right. And Norm was here, and every time he'd come into the, the bar, everyone would shout, Norm! Norm yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So the only thing missing from the set is the pool table, because the pool table was taken by uh, one of the stars of the show. Oh, okay. He took it home. He, you know, he made so little money on this show that he had to have yeah. a tool pool table. And, now, my goodness, in, in the actual uh, series, the bar looks so much deeper. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, it looks at least twice as long as what it is now. Well, I, I think, yeah. actually, it was cut down a little, because okay. I think there might have been a little middle piece that they took out simply because of the space we had yeah, here. I see. I see. Uh, but this is a working bar. So we do parties here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, in, uh, in past years, we've done Monday Night Football. You've got big screen televisions, wow. and you get get, get a, a glass of beer, a real <laughs> glass of beer, not a prop like this, yeah. and uh, and have a good time. Yeah. So you know, folks, if you're having a party in a uh, in a bar party, where can, is there a better place to throw it than right here? You can Cheers. rent it. You rent this place for a party. Yeah. People yeah. do all the time. Now, where where did he actually shoot this? Do you know, Chris? Yes, at, uh, in, at on the Paramount lot. On the Paramount lot. And it was, uh, Cheers was uh, originally, it was taking place in... Uh, in Boston. In, in Boston. The original yeah. bar is in, the original bar is still in Boston. The original bar But the funny there. thing is, when most people go to the bar, the, the original bar in Boston, which is on, on, uh, on uh, either on Com Ave or Beacon, uh, Beacon Street, uh, they're disappointed because they have in their heads this bar and yeah. not that bar, uh, right? Okay. So yeah. they don't feel they've really been to Cheers until they come here. Yeah. And, you, and, and I'm, I'm assuming Sam Malone isn't back uh, uh, pouring no, beer for no, him. No, and, uh, no. Yeah. But we get uh, visitors from Germany, from Japan, wow. from all over the world, and they go, Cheers! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, this is exciting. This is, this is marvelous. Uh, do you mind, before we leave here, can I just walk down the end uh, and walk past the camera just like, uh, yes. just like I'm coming in? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I'll have a draft. What do people say when they when they uh, when they see these uh, see these sets? Any comments? Yeah, well, I mean, people love being on these sets because it, it gives them a feeling like they're close to Hollywood and things. But there are also people who are disappointed, you know. Uh -huh. And what I tell them is that you know, sets don't have to look real in reality, they only have to look real through the camera lens. <laughs> and the camera lens is in fact the biggest liar on earth. So you can make things look beautiful and fantastic and, and all sorts of wonderful things when in actual fact, it doesn't look like much at all. But that's, that's Hollywood and that's the magic of Hollywood. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's uh, what, what is reality and what is Hollywood are two different things. <laughs> and, and, uh, you have enough of reality when you're working, et cetera, et cetera. You sit down in that movie theater in front of that TV set. This is what you get. Yeah. Looks like somebody took this corner a little too sharp. Joe. Took out the fire plug and the stop sign. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called Leathernecks. They've been called Devil Dogs. 
But above all, they're called Marines. It's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I was terrified. I was like, your head's gonna explode. Migraine is a disabling disease. Just all of a sudden couldn't see. Migraine has ruined my life. Absolutely terrifying. There's pain that does not stop. I feel like I'm dying. There's thunder and lightning. It's a throbbing, pulsing, banging, hammering feeling in your head. 36 million Americans suffer. I started getting migraines around five years old. Just takes over everything. I feel trapped by migraine. It hurts like my head's gonna like fall off. And the whole world around you stops. My world has gotten small. You feel like the world's closing in on you. There's nothing you can do. I had spent a year housebound. It's like you're trapped in your head. There's no escaping it. You can't leave your body. Don't suffer alone. Make your move against migraine. Learn more. Find help. Get connected. The American Migraine Foundation. <laughs> we're live in Hollywood, and we got a free shower over here that we're taking. Uh, you know, who was it that we had the other day? We got Vin Diesel on the street, and now we got a broken uh, water main or something. But this is marvelous. Look at that uh, California donuts. And, uh, wow. Wow. Only in L.A., man. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that great? You know, they did that just for us. I said, listen, guys, could you do a little water act for me down here? I mean, we're going to be shooting down here in little Armenia. And if you could do a little something for us, we'd certainly appreciate it. Well, you know, they, uh, they did this little spritzer here. We appreciate it. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. Man, if there's not enough uh, water in this... Uh, city what with the floods and everything oh man you gotta love it you gotta love it can we see the hollywood sign from here i uh i don't know i think if it weren't for pier one imports we would be able to but uh i don't know let's see if, let's see if we can get it uh going down the uh, Taft Street here. Well, I don't know if you can see the, uh, <laughs> the uh, fire plugs laying here on the side of the street. Very, uh, very neat. Looks like somebody took this corner a little too sharp took out the fire plug and the stop sign. So we're at the corner of Taft in Hollywood here in Little Armenia. And uh, man, I tell you, where are all the kids when you need them, you know? Because if I was seven or eight and this happened in my neighborhood, I'd be down to my skivvies and, and just getting the shower of my life under that thing. It's a hot day today too. And uh, I tell you, I just got one question, America. Where in the heck are all the kids? All right, we got uh, LA's finest there, the firefighters out there trying to control this puppy. They're digging a big hole in the street. What the heck for? I don't know. But uh, looks like uh, they're going to work. Oh, they're ah, shutting off the main valve. Well, now we know why. Okay. I don't know. Is that it, John? Does this... Uh, is it under control? I don't think so. I got uh, we got two firemen over there giving it uh, giving it to what for? You know, I was watching earthquake last night. You know, or uh, what was that volcano thing in the in the uh, uh, what was the name of that movie, John? No, that other guy it happened right here in L.A. What was the name of that? Okay. One of those disaster movies. I was watching it last night. Anyway, it started just like this. Of course, it didn't end like that. It's all over now. All right, now I'm about ready to get sprayed by the water. That's not going to happen. Big bus here. 
Okay, here's a line I've been waiting to say all my life. All right, folks, it's all over. You can all go home now. Same as all over. All right, go back to your home, folks. It's all done. Okay, that's a wrap. Nothing to see here. We're out of here.